Okay, in the last video we have implemented output grid and core helper. Now we need to create another one. It will be called propagation helper. So in the core solver class, create propagation helper. Okay, let's create this class in Unity. Let's place it in our namespace and delete the monobehavior inheritance. So this class will be keeping the collections needed for propagation step. We need to create output grid, reference value. We'll call it output grid, core helper, core helper, boolean value, tile with no solution present, uh, cell with no solution present. A sorted set of low entropy cell, cell another helper class called low entropy set and a queue of vector pair. We will call it pairs to propagate. We will have a sorted set of low entropy cells, so cells that we will have to collapse if we need to collapse a cell. So those will be the candidates with low entropy value. And pairs to propagate are pairs that will be used in the propagation process. So every time we collapse a cell, we create a new propagation pair from the neighbors. So let's create a low entropy cell. So let's open our low entropy cell class and let's put it in our namespace and delete the monobehavior inheritance. When we calculate the entropy, we will use low entropy cell as a container to pass in the entropy value and the position and place it in a sorted set. And because it, we are using sorted set, we need to implement iComparable and iEquality Compare interfaces uh, for easier use uh, for this ent low entropy cell with those collections. So let's implement the interfaces iComparable and we need to import it from using system and we will pass it low entropy cell and also i equality comparer so you might recall that we have done exactly the same for our i value interface great we have implemented the interfaces methods but first we need some fields so first we will store vector to int position it will be a property type vector to int called position okay another property called entropy of type float and another private float field called small entropy noise okay so you might recall from our theoretical introduction that when we calculate entropy we might have a case when two cells have exactly the same entropy score that's why we will use a small entropy noise, which will be a small random value that will be added to the entropy value. Okay, now let's create constructor. We will pass it in the vector to position and float entropy. So vector to int. Let's assign those variables. Okay, and on top of the constructor, we also want to create a random value for small entropy and add it to our entropy property. So small entropy noise equals unity random range. I want to get the value be between 0,001f to 0,005f. And we will add it to entropy to get the unique value of entropy. Okay, so let's implement those interfaces methods. To compare, we will call if entropy greater than other entropy, return one. So basically this method just wants to know if what we have passed is greater, equal, or lesser than our current entropy cell. Else, if entropy is less than other entropy, we return minus one, and else, we return a zero, so they are equal. Now let's implement the equality check. We want to return. We have X and Y. Let's call them cell one and cell two. And we will call cell one position dot X equals cell two position dot X and cell one 
position dot y equals cell two position dot y. Okay, let's implement the get hash code, and for this we would need to overload, override get hash code, and for get hash code of override function will return position dot get hash code, and here we want to return in the get hash code the function return obj dot get hash code. So we will return the function from below. Okay, great. So we have now low entropy cell class implemented. Let's go back to propagation helper and finish this class. So here we want to create properties to access the sorted set and our pairs to propagate Q and lowest entropy set. So let's create a encapsulate field and the same here. Encapsulate field to create properties. And we don't want to create set functions for those. Now let's create a constructor. And in here we want to pass the output grid and core helper. And we want to assign those. Next, we want to create check if pair should be processed method that takes vector pair and return a bool value. So we pass it a vector pair, propagate pair, and we'll return output grid, check if valid position, and we want to pass here position, propagation pair, cell to propagate position, and also we want to check are we checking previous cell again is false. So propagation pair, I need to change the name, dot are we checking previous cell equals false. Okay, so we are just checking if the pair should be processed. Great, next we want to implement the analyze propagation result. It will be void method that takes propagation pair, start count, and new possible pattern count, both integers. So let's create it. Public void analyze propagation results. It will take vector pair called propagate pair int start count and int new possible pattern count. Okay, so this method checks the results of propagation. We either have a collapsed cell, a collision, or a cell that is a candidate for collapsed cell step due to low entropy. So what we are passing here is a propagation pair and after propagation, we had a start count. So how many possible indices the possible indices list had in it before the propagation and new possible pattern count. So this is the same list after propagation. And we need to check if the new possible pattern count is greater than uh, zero, because if it's zero, we have a collision. If we, it is one, we have collapsed the cell. And if it's more than one, uh, it should be a and it is different than start count. We have a candidate for low entropy. So let's create the if statement check if new possible pattern count is greater than one and is start count is greater than new possible pattern count. Then we have a candidate for low entropy cell. So we will call add new pairs to propagate Q. And we will pass propagate pair dot cell to propagate position and propagate and propagate pair base cell position. Okay, and we don't have yet this method, so let's create a placeholder for this. Good. And we need add to low entropy set method. And it will take propagate per cell to propagate position and core helper. 
Okay. Actually, let, let's create this method and then we'll, we'll make some changes. Okay. And actually, we don't need to pass the core helper here because we have core helper as the class uh, reference value. So we can access it at this point and we don't have to pass it inside the method definition. Okay. Let's finish the analyze propagation results. So next case is if the new possible pattern count equals zero, we have a collision. So we need to set cell with no solution present. So our Boolean flag for a collision to true. And if new possible pattern count is equal one, we call cell with no solution present equals core helper we call cell a check cell solution for collision so we are checking if our solution didn't cause a collision somewhere so we will pass it propagate per dot cell to propagate position and output grid okay great so let's go and implement add to low entropy set and here we will be adding the cell with low entropy to the low entropy set. So we will have to call var element of low entropy set. So we are not sure if the element is inside our set or not. So let's call low entropy set where again using link and we will call x lambda expression x position equals cell to propagate position so we are comparing if the vector two positions are the same and call first or default so we would need to check now if we have null value or if we have an existing element inside our set. So if element of low entropy set equals null and output grid, check if cell is collapsed and cell to propagate position equals false. So we don't want to add to low entropy uh, set a cell that is already collapsed in case we are good to go we need to calculate new entropy float entropy equal core helper calculate entropy and we will pass it the cell to propagate position and our output grid and then we add to the set so lowest entropy set add new and we create low entropy cell and pass it the cell to propagate position and the entropy score we have just calculated okay good but if the cell uh, if the element already exists in our set we will simply remove it element of low entropy set then we will calculate new entropy so element low entropy set entropy equals course helper calculate entropy cell position to propagate and output grid so we have recalculated its entropy and we re-add it to our set we call add element of low entropy set so that's where we will keep our uh, set in order. Okay, next we need to implement add new pair to propagate Q. So this is this method. And here we want to create a list. And it will be a core helper. Create four di direction neighbors. And we call cell cell to propagate position and a base cell position okay and now we need to go for each 
item in our list and first to propagate an Q item. Okay, next two methods will be check for conflicts and set conflict flag. To check for conflicts we will return a bool value and it will return tell with no solution present boolean flag and next set conflict flag void public void set conflict flag and we'll set cell with uh, no solution to true okay great so we're done with propagation helper finally we can go back to our core solver and keep on implementing this uh, i think this is the last class for our core solver algorithm let's create the constructor the constructor will take output grid and pattern manager and we can assign those okay great and what we need to do we want to also to create the core helper and propagation helper so let's call this core helper equals new core helper and we will pass the pattern this dot pattern manager and we want to create this dot propagation helper equals new propagation helper and we need to pass the output grid is that output grid and this dot core helper okay so we have the setup we have the helper classes set up so we can go and start from the propagation step so let's create our propagate method public void propagate okay so this is the step where after collapsing a cell we check other grid uh, cells if they can have their possibility list reduced uh, we continue propagation until our queue is empty uh, we also need to check for conflicts to stop pro propagation if we know there can't be a solution so we have a conflict okay so let's create a while loop and uh, while propagation helper pairs to propagate so this is our queue, count is greater than zero. We will call var dot uh, pro propagate pair equals propagation helper pairs to propagate dq. So we have dequeued a cell with uh, that should be propagated and we call if propagation helper check if pair should be processed. So we ensure that the cell should be proce processed further and is not collapsed or there is no conflict we pass this uh, a propagation pair and if it is true we can call process cell on this propagation pair it is a new method we will create a placeholder for it okay and now if propagation helper check for conflicts so after propagation we always check for conflict and check if the grid is solved so output grid check if grid is solved and if it is so we return so we stop our while loop and if we finish the while loop so if the queue is empty we also need to check a propagation helper check for conflicts and we also want to know if propagation helper pairs to propagate count equals zero and propagation helper low entropy set count equals zero so this is the case when we have no more pairs to propagate and, and no more low entropy cells so we have a situation where we again have to choose a cell with high entropies and so the best op uh, option here is to just start again so we call propagation helper set conflict flag so we set the conflict flag and the algorithm will restart okay i will split the video here since it is getting too long so see you in the next part